So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Trauma Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're gonna be talking about the perception of Lori Harvey versus the perception of Asian Doll. Lori Harvey has been trending a lot lately as she has debuted her newest boyfriend, Damson Idris, who is an actor most known for his role in Snowfall on FX. I've actually never watched Snowfall. Is it worth watching? Let me know. I was stuck on the Ratchet TV wave for so long that once I stopped watching reality TV, I just didn't even watch shows anymore unless they were trending. But y'all recommend some good shows for me. I have a lot more free time these days. But Lori and Damson are now an item. Everybody is raving over them and everyone has been giving Lori praise for how she's been able to collect these infinity stones of the hottest men in entertainment. On the other hand, we have rapper Asian Doll, who is a rapper out of Dallas, Texas. She used to be signed to Gucci Mane's 1017 label, but she's currently an independent artist. Asian Doll is the self-proclaimed queen of drill music and I'm going to be rolling up to say I really do not listen to Asian Doll at all but I still do think she has relevance in hip-hop and urban pop culture and outside of her music her relevance is similar to Lori Harvey. Both ladies have trended for the men that they date and the relationships that they choose to make public but although there is a common denominator the perception of both ladies is the complete opposite. Lori Harvey gets praised for creating this dream catcher web of men like literally the man of your dreams is within her dream catcher but Asian Doll constantly defends her dating choices because she's constantly constantly called a hoe or she isn't taken as serious when she presents a new man to the public. And I know the thumbnail says thoughts and dating. I don't think either ladies are thoughts. Like, let's just get that out the way. But I feel like the perception that people are trying to label them as that they are thoughts or hoes or whores or fast or whatever. And I feel like that perception is so annoying to give women who choose to date multiple men because why settle for one option when at this very age, I feel like you should be expanding your horizons. I could be biased just because I am the same age as these ladies and we're all peers, but I still feel like there's nothing wrong with dating around and finding what you like. From my experience, it's better to do that than to be closed-minded or think that you should limit yourself to just certain types of guys. Absolutely not. I do think there are factors that make this a reality because obviously both ladies are young women in their mid-20s who are dating just like the rest of us. Both Lori Harvey and Asian Doll are 26 years old. I'm a year younger, so we're all around the same age and doing the same thing. However, like I said, the perception and the labeling that both ladies get couldn't be farther from the same. So I thought it would be very interesting to talk about why this is and the disparities between both ladies as they approach dating. So I've broken this video down into three main talking points. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So point number one is approach and perception. And what exactly that means is these ladies and their approach to dating and the perception that they are giving from dating. I think to speak in general, it is more than obvious that both both of these ladies have a different approach to dating. Lori Harvey is not going to be seen with anybody who was not an A-lister because I think a lot of her tactic is social climbing and making herself look desirable. The social climbing comes from the idea of attaching your name to certain individuals that can give you a certain look. And you may be thinking, why does she need to attach her name to other individuals if she comes from a wealthy and well-known family and she's always had the connections at her fingertips? And I do agree with that point because I even questioned it. But I think for Lori, attaching herself to these men is more of a power play in the eyes of other women and men and not necessarily what it does for her in the way that an average person would go about it. A nobody like myself would date Michael B. Jordan or Damson Idris for the social perks but Lori Harvey doesn't have to do that and by the way I'm not saying that I would date anybody to get clout I'm just saying. Lori Harvey's perception is that she is high quality, high maintenance, and high standards and she tries to reflect that in the guys that she attaches herself to. Now the counter argument to that is she's made poor choices along the way but I think that shows the transparency of a lot of young women making mistakes in the guys that they do date at this age. I bet to some degree a lot of us have dated a future. Somebody who is well known has that rapper or gangster sober cat to them but also has a lot of baggage with whatever it may be. In future's case it's the kids and the baby mamas and all of that and I'm not gonna lie I have definitely dated the future type and you know he's spontaneous he's very handsome has great sex but definitely the bad boy that myself or Lori should not be with. See that that's why when I talk about these things and y'all say I'm hating and I act like I'm above, do y'all know that almost everything I've spoken on, I've done the same exact things. It's not from a I'm better than you point of view. It's from a I've lived it and I've learned from it and I'm trying to do better. So moving on, when it comes to somebody like Diddy, I think there are a lot
lot of young women who have dated a Diddy-like figure. A man who was way older than you, in a different life space than you, and offers you some type of maturity blanket. And I wouldn't even say that Diddy fits all of that, but that is what I think he was supposed to look like for Lori Harvey when they did date. And I think this example in particular is something a lot of young women are doing right now. They are 24 years old, but their boyfriend is 48 years old. And I have spoken about this. I guess if it's two grown people, I'm not necessarily mad about it, but I'm not gonna lie, I still do think it is kind of weird, but to each their own. So in Lori's examples of dating, she's gone for men who, if she attaches her name to them, it makes her look like she's desirable and she has the highest level of options. And although a lot of the choices of men are honestly straight duds who just have a title or fame or money, I think what she is representing is how a lot of young women actually date in real life. Her dating life is just really on display. Now her perception is well received for three reasons. Those are likability, attraction, and silence. Lori Harvey is likable, meaning she does not have a bad attitude or bad reputation that we know of, and she doesn't antagonize or have any type of hostile narrative surrounding her name that we know of. And when she does appear in interviews or anything, she speaks well and says all of the right things. Her media training is impeccable, I'm not gonna lie. She's also attractive. I mean, both ladies are, but she really does embody what society thinks is the pinnacle of beauty. Yes, she's a black girl, but she does kind of look ambiguous the more that you look at her, and I think a lot of people are mesmerized by her over overall look. And then also she's silent, which I'm going to speak on later, but she does not announce these men in the format that makes her look bad, even though what she's doing would in most cases get her labeled as a hoe or other names of that sort. But because she does value being reserved about displaying these relationships, it does work for her. She almost lets the media and the rumors speak for her and then she remains silent while everybody is trying to figure out the answers to these rumors. It's very beneficial to remain tight-lipped about your personal business when everybody is in your business. Now, moving on over to Asian Doll, let's talk about her approach and her perception. Asian Doll gets a lot of flack and I do think part of it is just people jumping on the bandwagon to hate on her and the other part of it is truly her. She is very aggressive in her approach and it's usually in her responses to what people have to say about her dating life but it's also a lot of random or sporadic outbursts about what people think about her. Asian Doll to me is another one of those celebrities. I'm not sure if calling her celebrity is correct but another one of those public figures where she cares a lot what people have to say about her but likes to pretend and then she doesn't. It's the syndrome that a lot of younger girls have when they are established and how at one point everybody really liked them and endorsed them until they kind of didn't. I've been going through a lot of that on YouTube for a long time now. When I first started, I got a lot of praises. Now, 20% of the comments are people calling me out of my name, but it does come with the territory. So Asian Doll's approach to dating is still kind of unclear, but I feel like what she does do is jump the gun. She posts so many different guys online saying that she's in love with them and she never felt love like this before. And and all of these other ride or die phrases that confuse social media users because it truly is random and sporadic. And I feel like another thing is the men that she does publicize are like F-list rappers. Either guys that have one song that is really known in their city or their region or guys that we have never heard of before. And I think honestly, Asian Doll is projecting grief with trying to replace whatever she had with her now deceased ex-boyfriend King Von. But I also feel like the time that has passed between when that happened has been her cry for help to be seen as hip hop couples goals. But it's like that wave has already come and gone and we have seen how much turbulence it brings to these women and I feel like Asian dolls should be seeking better partners. I feel like dating a rapper isn't even a flex anymore. It's kind of embarrassing, but hey, again, to each their own. Now, Asian dolls' perception is completely opposite of Lori Harvey, like I said, and I believe it's because of how hard she goes for all of these random guys and how frequent she's been changing the men as she dates. I know we can say Lori Harvey is frequent as well, but it seems like for Lori Harvey, it's like a once a year type of thing. Asian Asian Doll kind of posted herself with, you know, three, four, maybe five guys throughout a one year period. Now, I know there's people that want to defend Asian Doll and say, well, aren't her and Lori Harvey doing the same thing? And the answer is yes, but no. Because no, it's like I'm playing. But because Asian Doll has definitely debuted men in a different way than Lori Harvey has. When Lori Harvey debuts her relationships, these are full blown relationships. The man is claiming her, they are actively seen together. There's more than one picture of them and then some. For Asian Doll, it seems very one sided. It seems forced. And between Jack Boy and twerking on Fabio Foreign and whomever else, it's never displayed in a light that makes her look good. So her perception plummets because the narrative that she puts out doesn't look like a stable relationship, but more or less a constant showcase of her looking for attention. So to end this point, people say that they're both doing the same thing. And I think the only thing that they have in common is that they are young women who are dating. But the perception of their dating lives is definitely different due to the fact that they approach it in a different way. Now, point number two is 
is it colorism? And I had to make this a point because I feel like I would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't. And I really don't think that colorism plays a role the whole way. I definitely think that colorism is always on the back burner or even the front burner, depending on the case. But I think with this example in particular, it really does come down to everything I said in point number one. Their approaches to dating and the perception of both ladies mixed in with their actual personalities. Lori Harvey is a silent killer and Asian Doll is a ticking time bomb. And society raves for Lori Harvey's mystery, whereas Asian Doll gives us a full synopsis, the preamble, and the chapter by chapter, play by play of her dating life. As much as I do think that darker skinned women get looked at harsher than lighter skinned women for doing the same thing, I don't think their skin tone is as big of a talking point in this regard because it really does come down to their actions. But I will say, Lori Harvey has the characteristic appeal of the lighter skin being deemed as feminine and approachable, whereas the darker skin is demonized and seen as masculine and aggressive. But if we're truly looking at both situations, it really does just come down to how these ladies move and the perceptions that they allow themselves to have based off of what they do and what they say. Which brings me to my next point. So my third and final point is shutting the hell up. And I always say this and I feel like I'm going to keep saying it. I stated several times in this video, both of the ladies' perception is based off of what they do, how they do it. But a lot of young women forget the aspect of remaining silent. And I think Lori Harvey deserves an Olympic gold medal for being quiet about how she moves. She does not plaster every guy that she talks to. And I think we'd be naive to think that in between her breakup with Michael B. Jordan and her new relationship with Damson Idris, she hasn't entertained other men in between that. I think she definitely has, but she's very quiet about it. Whereas Asian Doll, it seems that every guy that she goes on a date with or does a music video with or surrounds herself with, it gets plastered to her Twitter and the captions make it look like she's head over heels in love with these guys. Ladies, if you're going to take away anything, learn to shut the hell up. And I'm not saying that you should silence yourself or let somebody police what you say or do. But what I am saying is be quick to listen and slow to speak. And the Bible says this as well. And I think it's truly a virtue to remain private about a lot of personal aspects. But in the case of a lot of young women, our dating life is one thing that I think should be handled with delicacy. And like I always tell y'all, women just don't get to win in certain departments. And the department of being seen with multiple men is something that we just get scorned for. And I really don't like how some of y'all feel as though that's me pushing patriarchy when I don't make the rules. I don't even enforce the rules, but I'm just telling you that's how society works. And I can't fix that. But also feeding into the narrative isn't going to fix it either because it's just going to be met with pushback. So the best thing that you can do is shut the hell up and remain silent about the things that are unconventional or viewed as unorthodox. That's literally the solution. And I think with Asian Doll, she's always on full display and maximum volume with these guys. And it leads people to look at her in a certain way. Whereas Lori Harvey does something similar, but she still puts mystery and allows her narrative to be a little bit more up in the air. You just got to play chess and know how to navigate your perception as a young woman, because oftentimes a lot of the negative and disrespectful terminology is put onto us, even when we're not even truly exemplifying what is being said about us. All in all, I think the differences are clear. Lori Harvey is Swiper the Fox and Asian Doll is Dora the Explorer. One is sneaky and the other one loudly broadcasts her adventures. And even though what they're doing is normal, and I think it is a better way to date than being set on not exploring your options, in society's eyes, it's just always going to be viewed differently depending on how you go about your dating choices and your dating life. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, go stream my song Ballin'. It's been out for a while now and the link is down below. Make sure y'all click it. I'm gonna be checking. Okay, go listen to Ballin'. Go stream that for me. And lastly, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media networks and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all. It's my pleasure, I'm in the game and y'all just red shirt uh, New freestyle to your checklist Pull it to your block like I play Tetris Quiet, hold, let me finish my sentence Can that they see like I'm from Memphis Going big like I'm from Texas Life is being blessed and exit Made that boy make me his bench press Now he breathless Green, white, green when I be reppin' Nardo wicked when we steppin' Dirty niggas I'm rejectin' Make me teach your ass a lesson I'ma call him when I need some money I ain't tryna wait Mansion in the motherland, bitch Leave it by the gate My brother countin' money up My sis driving the getaway It's queen child mature Cause you know I make it ricochet. Told y'all it's a ceremony. Every day a cabaret. Get out my way, I'm out the way. They say I'm out the ordinary. Uh -huh. Call my favorite cousins up, they round the way and on the way. Had to come to Auntie House, cause last time I did 20 I said, I'ma call him when I need some money. I ain't tryna wait. Yeah, Mission in the motherland, bitch. Leave it by the gate. Come Call on. my favorite cousins up, they uh -huh. round the way and on the way. Yeah, Had to come to Auntie House, cause last time I did 20k. Yo, Chama. they don't know who they messing with. Nope. I be where the blessings is. My pockets never done. Never. You can't touch all this excellence, you gon' need a prerequisite You gon' need some relevance, so cut it, OT
spicy Genesis. Pat in the mail for my boys in the booth. Yeah. Big, meaty, spicy, juicy, baby, call me Suya. I said 24 7, we stacking, racking. I'm a bad bitch, you fraction, lacking. Counting bread while he playing Madden. I'm in the building, bitch, what's happening? Queen time up here.